Hello and welcome to ProTrader Strategies Market Commentary for Thursday, May the 16th. My name is Eric Wilkinson and some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal. I'm here to teach you some different strategies you can then implement into your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. Also, remember, past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, having that out of the way, let's get it on with that economic data. And that's not the economic data. <laughs> All right. Across the pond, not really a whole lot to see here. Today, though, here in the United States, we got some good economic data. We got building permits. Remember, permits can be pulled as much as they want, but really the building is the actual aspect that we're looking for. But the permits did come in line with expectations at 1.3 million permits pulled. And then Philly Fed came in at 16.6, expected to be 10. And then they give this crazy outlook that they think that we're going to be pulling back in the second half of the year. So expansion right now like crazy, but then we're going to see this massive pullback uh, the second half of the year. I don't know if that's necessarily going to uh, really follow through. And then we got housing starts coming in at 1.24 million units, expected to be 1.21. They did revise last month's number up slightly uh, to 1.17 million units. So when we're seeing permits pulled, now that was building permits being pulled in line with expectations, but we're starting to see some housing starts over expectations. That's a that's a good thing. When we're seeing building permits being pulled, uh, even housing permits being pulled, and they're being used. So those permits, you can pull as many as you want. It doesn't necessarily mean you use that permit to build that location. So um, you can pull permits. Doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna follow through, but some of these housing permits we're seeing ramp up and uh, the housing starts still coming through. And then we got unemployment claims coming in at 212,000, expected to be 220. If people less people are claiming unemployment, that is uh, expectations that we are near full employment, although those people are off of the waiting list there uh, and are off, not the waiting list, sorry, off of the porch in a sense, because if you aren't filing for unemployment, even though you don't have a job, it means that you fall off of the unemployment number and you aren't a statistic anymore. So um, when we see the market or the economy start to ramp back up, we see those unemployment claims jack up because those people are coming off the sidelines. It's a good thing now that we're seeing uh, the employment numbers have uh, done very well. We're seeing these claims come down a little bit. That means those people that came off the sidelines have uh, are either um, on the unemployment number or are uh, finding a job. So those claims, when they're lowering their claims, it means they're usually finding a job. And that's about it. Natural gas storage is uh, coming out here in a little bit, a little bit early on the daily market commentary maybe for that. Let's see. Uh, Actually, it should probably be out right now. It is uh, 106 billion cubic feet expected to be 105 billion cubic feet. So a slight increase there, kind of in line with that oil number we saw yesterday. Even though we got that increase yesterday, we're breaking back above that 63 Fibonacci ex uh, extension area. That is going to be a support and resistance area as we can see here let me just pull up a uh, uh, thing for my marker let's pull that up and drop down so um, this is that area we were talking about this 63 right here 63.08 we'll call it 63 dollars uh, that is where we are going to see support and resistance we do have the uh, point of control up we have two points of control we got one here and one here uh, the overall market's rallying. I would expect crude oil to really um, kind of hold right in and around here, maybe a little bit higher, but like I've said many times, I would like to see it. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to see it, but I would like to see oil stay at relatively low levels. In the 50s would be best because I think that that creates the velocity of money, which helps out this overall market move. So we're looking for that to happen. Um, Hopefully it will, because that would be good for the overall economy. Yes, higher oil prices mean there's demand there, but um, at the end of the day, we would much rather see this money being spent elsewhere, going forward anyway. All right, then gold futures are coming off dramatically. We're seeing a nice big rally today in equities. As a matter of fact, I was chasing equities all over the place, trying to get on some bullish deltas 
as the market starts correcting here. I tried to hold off as long as I could. Usually I'm very early on these moves. I waited for this one to get a couple of confirmations because I got stung earlier. So looking for that to uh, work through. Also, uh, remember I am uh, short gold futures or gold through GLD. So uh, looking for that to continue to sell off as the market starts to correct here. Bonds finally starting to roll over a little bit. You know, it was a flight to quality or a flight to safety here, and that caused the overall, as the uh, like the uh, equities were coming off, that was causing the bonds to move higher. As people were thinking that, you know, as price goes up, then that means that the interest rates are looking to go down. So I don't think that the Fed is going to lower interest rates anytime soon, not in 2019 anyway. Yes, the Fed fund futures are pricing that in towards the end of the year, but I don't think that it's actually, you know, it's a little bit early, six months ahead uh, on Fed fund futures predicting what that future is. It's really within uh, 45 days or so that is the major time to really kind of keep an eye on those uh, probabilities. But six months ahead, uh, I think it's a little bit overdone to the upside on Fed funds, which you know is indicating a lower interest rate. So I think that the interest rate should stay the same, causing these bonds to start rolling over, which is a good thing. I don't think I have enough time for my TLT to come to fruition. If you guys remember, I put on, yeah, I actually have on uh, 36 day to expiration on my long puts in TLT. So hopefully we can get that to roll over for me and have those trades come back because uh, right now they're not looking too good. All right, VIX is coming off. This is another reason why I was looking to scramble trying to sell premium. We've seen the VIX come off steadily throughout this week and um, finally decided to jump on it because we are starting to really see this market rally. I think it might be looking for some of those overnight highs that we saw in the E-mini S&Ps and the NASDAQ. I think the market needs to go up and print those, especially uh, the E-mini S&Ps. We'll see here in a minute, but these highs I think are a target right now. Yes, they are above the value area high. Price is being accepted at these higher levels. We've seen the point of controls move higher, which is what we were talking about would happen. That's finally happened. So now this 7450 area right here in and around there, 74 is where the point of control is. That's the basic POC right there. And then we've got um, 7450 lighting up just slightly higher than that. Uh, 7450 is going to be the support now. Oops, support. All right, so we're looking for that as the support, the POC is right there. So that's what I was talking about, the market wanting to come back and forth on that. This support is gonna be a very weak support, all right, as we're looking at it, because this POC, the POC is gonna kind of trump that as it pulls back down. Value area high will act as a resistance here up at the point where we are right now for the most part, just slightly higher than that, but um, you know, 76.50 is probably where that resistance lies there. Uh, that could act as support uh, resistance as we're rallying up to that NASDAQ being up 100 points. That's a big move on the day. So we could easily see this market start to slow down on the momentum, maybe even some profit taking going on from the weaker hands like the, um, uh, you know, the day traders that are taking advantage of this nice big move that is almost unabated to the upside at this point. All right, E-mini S&P is up about 35 points. Again, making it look very strong to the upside, breaking above the five, uh, the 50-day and the nine-day moving averages. Both of those things being bullish. If the uh, nine-day can stay above that 50-day, that's still a bullish indication. Now let's take a look at the 30-minute chart. Uh, each blue section is a day. This gray is the overnight. Uh, the darker section are the day sessions. You can see overnight inventory actually initially got a little bit short heading into the day session. We've gotten some pretty good economic data and we can see that the overall market was starting to rally, but no real attempt to flush out those longs overnight. The market got the data today, especially in Philly Fed, and we can see unabated to the upside at this point. Um, 
with the E-mini S&Ps. And I'm expecting this to continue on. I think the economic data is pretty decent. I don't think that the tariffs are necessarily gonna go through, especially as he pushed off the autos. I think some other things might get pushed off as well going forward, all right? Um, and then we've got booking.com. This is a trade that I've chased all flipping morning. I was trying to go into the June and sell the uh, 1,650 puts in there. Um, for about $8.70. I started out, believe it or not, at about $9.50. This was one of the first trades I was looking to try and put in because it had high implied volatility. No earnings coming in, as we can see. This has got a lot of clean months in here. So at least two, I've got this one and this one as a clean month and then have to worry about the uh, earnings there. But you know, when we're selling premium, I'm gonna be looking at these right here and um, that's exactly what I was doing. It was perfectly set up. We've got that move higher, point of control just slightly higher for the time. Yes, the, uh, the money was put in right here. This is where it found support because that's where people were finding value. Uh, this is where it has a tendency to stall out, but um, we could easily see it come up here and go to that point of control and start settling down. Therefore, we would see the volatility come out a little bit. I get the directional move higher and selling those puts way down here. That would be the good thing. So that's where I was looking at the 1650 puts, but was not able to uh, get those off. And I think that was in the June. So the 1650 puts are gone. Not gonna be trading those. The thing I did get off though was in my IRA and in my uh, IRA, I went into the SPY. It's a smaller contract. My IRA is smaller than my trading account and did it proportionally. With the IRA, I went in and sold the SPY uh, puts as well. We have high implied volatility in there. As you can see, it's above 30, which is what I'm looking for for these types of uh, Actually, it's way below. It's uh, it's below 30. All right, the trades that I have put on today are uh, in my IRA and in my margin account. In my IRA, though, I put in SPY. It's got low implied volatility, as you can see here. Market's starting to spike. I wanted to take advantage of some directional move here and went into... Uh, the market to sell these, uh, sorry, sell the SPY. And I went in, I, I looked at the longer duration, which follows my rules, right? I got 30 some odd days to expiration, but I think this is gonna be a rather quick move to these highs. So I went to the shorter duration, so I didn't have to spend as much. Yes, my theta decay is going to be fighting me on this trade, but, um, you know, it was basically costing me half as much. And I think that this move is going to happen relatively quickly. So I jumped on it. So I went into with my IRA, uh, on my IRA, I did the June and, uh, in the SPY did the June, uh, 290 puts. Wait, yes. Bought the, I bought the 290, sorry, calls in there for four dollars and two cents so looking for this move to come up and test these highs because if you remember correlating with spy doesn't show the overnight trade but that is basically where we saw the highs uh trading in the e-mini s and p's overnight so that's what i was looking for as a target for the e-mini s and p's correlating back to the spy so the ira i did this trade here pretty small but um needed some some new bullish directional uh, trades in my IRA. SPX, I did this one in my, uh, this is in my trading account and went into the June as well and bought the uh, 20960 uh, calls. Yeah, so the 20960 calls, looking for it to come up and uh, maybe test this Fibonacci area, but at least print these highs here. So making a move, hopefully it'll blow through this value area high, but SPX expecting it to go to the 260s and paid up for these, I uh, paid up to uh, $12 on this trade here. So uh, very small, like I said, because I'm doing it in SPX, uh, did it small, looking for it to come up and at least test that area there. 
uh, print those highs intraday. So uh, that's all I've done. Added SPX to my trading account, SPY to my IRA, and looking to uh, see these highs get printed maybe next week. I think the market may start slowing down as we get up there, but I do believe that we are going to go up there and print that at least in the day session uh, before anything else happens. That The market has that uh, as a target, I believe. All right, that's all I got for you guys. Two webinars today, though. One is going to be basically intro to trading options. I'm going to give you easy ways, basic things to remember around the Greeks, easy ways to remember those, and uh, setting it up and when or where is a good opportunity to buy or sell option strategies. So check that one out. And then later on, right after that one, almost a you know lockstep, uh, I'm going to be gearing up for the call ratio spread. So that one's going to be a great one for a bullish directional assumption, especially if you listen to what I've just said, where we go up and at least test those highs. We might start looking to slow down and around there as the market starts to cover some of that long inventory. So that would be a good opportunity to set up this strategy. So check it out at protraderstrategies.com. And uh, Westmark is the other one that's going to be a little bit earlier uh, today. So both of those uh, I'm going to go off for about an hour each. All right, so check it out at Pro Trader Strategies. And if you can't take that, take it easy.